Welcome back. Today, I want to put down a content release schedule for the next few episodes and to talk about the system I've been using, which is the most common question that people have for me. In particular, I'll introduce the hardware circulation and filtration of the system. Here comes a checklist of my minimalist approach to reef keeping. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. This is one of the greatest quotes in science, and reef keeping is no different. There should be no redundant component or procedure in this setup, where everything is designed for a purpose. Before getting down to details, I would like to give you some updates on the recent development of the tank. One noticeable change is the location of this green frog spawn coral. I have moved it up as sexy shrimps were nibbling at it on the sand, causing it to contract. After staying away from the sand bed, the frog spawn coral recovered shortly, and I saw its sweeper tentacles extending again. Another interesting observation is that this acropora has been branching from the live rock right behind the clove polyps, shooting out towards the front glass at a pretty decent angle. While at the same time, there were also some clove polyps rising from beneath the same colony. I once worried that they might fight with each other, but thank God they did not. Moreover, there is a new branch from this purple acropora, and it can be identified by its lighter and brighter color from the rest. The green small polyps look especially sharp in color on the new twig. Oh, almost forgot the green anemone. Both frags have recovered rapidly. I put one at its original place and returned the other back to the ocean. The clownfish was so happy to see its friend back home, and now it was able to sleep well at night. Finally, I found these holes on hermit shells, which I would have to replace sooner or later with the bigger new ones from the beach to accommodate the ever-growing hermit crabs. Thanks for bearing with me. Without further ado, let's take a look at this Red Sea Reefer 250 system. It features an assembly-ready piping, no gluing required for installation. What I like the most is the silent and regulated downflow system with emergency overflow. You can turn this valve to match the volume of the returning pump so that the water level at the overflow box can be adjusted to eliminate water sound of any kind. And this is the returning pipe, which is connected to the main pump. I've been using this 3000 liter per hour return pump made with sine wave technology that enables it to operate at complete silence. If water evaporates and you don't top off, the water level in the return pump chamber will fall and expose the pump to the air, which can cause serious consequences. If you see bubbles coming out of the overflow into the main tank, it means there's something wrong with the top-up system and it's time to replenish fresh water right away. As tank water continues to evaporate, this is where the integrated automatic top-up system with reservoir comes handy. The system will keep the water level at the return pump chamber stable, as long as there is fresh water in the reservoir. The Reefer 250 comes with a professional sump with adjustable height skimmer chamber. By moving the adjustable gate up and down, you are able to set the water level of this chamber for optimal skimmer performance. The physical filtration consists of a filter cup and a filter bag. I suggest that you use the best of quality filter media to keep detritus away from the rest of the sump. And it is also important that you wash the filter floss frequently to keep at its best performance. 
The Reefer 250 also comes with a surface skimmer with removable combs, which essentially allows the protein film on the water surface to be captured by the filter floss down beneath. A nice and a cool feature that I suggest you consider for your own build. Another important component of the physical filtration is the protein skimmer. If you want to have your tank water crystal clear, free of small particles, you definitely need a powerful skimmer. I run the skimmer 24-7 except for coral feeding time, in the morning and at night, half an hour each. In terms of the biological filtration, I have these bio rings as home for nitrifying bacteria which help remove ammonia and nitrites from the aquarium. When the nitrogen cycle is completed, you are no longer required to supplement the nitrifying bacteria as they will constantly reproduce to keep the balance going forward. Make sure you use real and live bacteria rather than chemicals rebranded as bioproducts. Another important component of biofiltration is the UAS or algae reactor, which helps keep nitrates and phosphates at bay. Although the sump is refugium ready, I don't want to pollute the sump by turning on the light. That's why I have this UAS enclosed form that will leave the sump free of algae. I had this UAS before I bought the algae reactor. If you have already had the bigger reactor, there's no need to add extra redundancy. I still keep the UAS simply because there are lots of micro creatures already living in there and I don't want to destroy their habitat. With the biofiltration in place, you can rest assured that the tank cabinet or the room where the aquarium is located, no matter how small they are, would be free of unpleasant smells. You would only be aware of a little elegant fragrance when you are very close to the tank water itself. To keep the water temperature stable, a chiller is a must-have for anyone interested in reef aquariums. Some chillers now come with a heating element as a standard and are suitable for regions of volatile weathers. As I'm living in a subtropical area, where the temperature typically varies from 57 Fahrenheit to 89 and is rarely below 49. I don't actually need a heating element. The water temperature has never been below 65 Fahrenheit, even at the lowest possible ambient temperature, as the pumps and the lights are constantly emitting heat to their surroundings. The chiller will be on when the water temperature is above 75 and it's been working quite well for all inhabitants in the tank. The chiller is the only equipment in the system known for noticeable noise, unless you can afford to install the chiller outside your home or in a separate room dedicated to equipment, the noise becomes an important factor to consider before you make a purchase decision. For the entire system to work, how many pumps do you need? You definitely need a return pump for the circulation, a pump for the chiller, a pump for the algae reactor, and another one for the skimmer. As most skimmers come with a pump pre-installed, you probably don't need a separate pump for the skimmer. On top of that, how many power sockets do you need? You need one for the return pump, one for the skimmer, two for the chiller, and two for the algae reactor. You probably need at least six more as I go through flow, lighting, and useful gadgets in the next few episodes. On a side note, please make sure you leave at least three inches at the back of the tank to allow for heat dissipation from the chiller, as well as for cables and pipes to pass through. These are the hardware, circulation and filtration part of the system that I've been using. What are your favorite systems? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you there. If you liked the video, please give a like. I really appreciate that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the latest updates. And thanks for watching.